What if the Fed is wrong? And what if higher prices are here to stay? Joining me now with more on that is Larry Lindsay. He is president and CEO of the Lindsay Group. He was former director of the National Economic Council and former governor of the Federal Reserve Board. Larry, it's great to see you again. And you've been very Thanks. consistent. Welcome back. Thank you on this message about how you, you say you, you don't think these inflation pressures will prove passing. Can you explain why? I mean, this ties so many different variables together. It means you don't think people are coming back in from the labor force and, you know, so much more with the producer pricing that we've seen could be sticky. Why is that? Why won't this all just go away in six or 12 or 18 months time? Well, we are in a situation where we're going to we're likely to have continued fiscal stimulus. Um, it's quite unlikely that in an election year, uh, the Congress is going to let their constituents have less money next year than they had in 2021. So I think the demand side of the economy is going to continue quite strong. Our constraint is on the supply side of the economy. Uh, you know, we're hearing about bottlenecks everywhere in the supply chain, going all the way back to the very start of the supply chain. The biggest problem every uh, employer has is finding qualified workers um, there are stories out that, you know, restaurants that are now able to reopen can't because they don't have the labor supply. So the economy is supply constrained. And if you combine rapid demand growth and limited supply growth, the outcome is inflation. So in other words, what you're saying is that we've seen a permanent change on the supply side of the economy. Why is it permanent? You know, a lot of this does seem to go back to how big the labor force is. And you've made this point that the dropouts of the labor force, we've seen the shutdowns, uh, the people who are leaving who may not come back could have a multi-generational impact that widens inequality in this country. It's the last thing that anybody wants to see happen. So is there still time to fix that situation? Isn't that what stimulus checks are trying to fix? And why don't you think it's going to work? Well, um, Two things have happened. Uh, the first is that, frankly, a lot of jobs have become a lot less attractive and are likely to stay that way. You know, interacting with lots and lots of strangers every day, you know, is certainly riskier than it's been. And even when we're all vaccinated, the lingering effects of what's just happened are going to continue. We're still going to have spikes. We're still going to have uh, variants of the virus, mutations come along. So I think there's a change in the attitude toward work. Uh, the stimulus checks, the higher unemployment, um, while I understand the motivation for them, uh, if they're continued on a long-term basis, will actually make that problem worse. Hmm. People who know they have another source of income aren't going to rush back into their old jobs. Let's talk about bond yields in the stock market then, where a lot of our viewers are wondering which way they should bet. And you know, you could say, okay, well, if, even if the 10 year goes to two or 3%, maybe that's no disaster except for certain parts of the market. Um, how much risk is there in stocks and what level do you think is uh, realistic for us to reach on bonds? Well, how much risk there is in stocks, no one actually knows, we'll find out. Uh, we've been feeding the equity market with tons of liquidity now for more than a decade. So. You know, we'll, we'll have to find out. The question is, will that ever stop? Now, if you look at the bond yield and you say, gee, the economy is likely to hit full employment, say in 15 months, 18 months, um, we're growing rapidly. Uh, inflation is creeping up. That's, you know, an inescapable fact. Um, the bond yield by year end under those circumstances would have to be at least 3% to be anything like what normal should be. And given what's happening in the economy, you've got to have a, a small positive uh, bond yield once you hit full employment. Um, we're now at 60 bips negative. Hmm. We're likely to have some acceleration of inflation. And we're going to have to get that real yield up as well. It's very hard to imagine that 3% is going to be the stopping point for the 10-year bond. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.